All right, we've got a really sad story yeah, to sad. bring you here um, that you may have seen. There's been a lot of discussion uh, about this particular item. So let's throw this uh, Substack post from Leighton Woodhouse up on the screen, breaking down the uh, U.S. government-funded animal experiments. Yeah, I did not know about all that this. That are ongoing, um, and you know, Leighton really details these in um, horrific uh, in horrific detail. So the one that really caught people's attention, I'll just read from the beginning of this piece. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, the division of the NIH that's run by Anthony Fauci, funded a recent experiment in Tunisia in which lab technicians placed sedated beagles, dogs, heads in mesh cages and allowed starved sand flies to feast on them alive, to feast on the dogs alive. Then they repeated the test outdoors with the beagles placed in cages in the desert overnight for nine consecutive nights in an area of Tunisia where sand flies were abundant and ZVL, the disease caused by the parasite that the sand flies carry, was endemic. So these beagles are sedated, heads put in mesh cages, were left outside, and um, the sand flies literally eat them to death. I mean the most horrific thing that you can possibly imagine. And what's more, um, there's allegation that the scientists slit the dog's vocal cords mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't Deep have bark. to listen to their anguished howls. Horrible, horrible, horrible thing to think about. Horrible to know that our government is funding it. And um, there's actually been some bipartisan opposition to this particular procedure, but also our funding, uh, routine funding of these type of animal experiments, which, you know, uh, Leighton kind of makes it, like, focuses on Fauci yeah. here with some justification because I mean, Fauci he's is, head of the agency. is yeah. a, a, you know, part of leadership. And also, reportedly, uh, uh, there's this quote in here from a whistleblower uh, who was quoted in a major New York Times expose of animal abuse at the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center in Nebraska who says that the reason for the what they describe as animal-centric culture, meaning culture centered around experimentation on animals, is people like Fauci and another leader, Collins. They really believe, the quote is, they really believe in that animal model. It's a huge impact having those two at the helm. The two directors' unquestioned commitment to animal testing sets the tone for science as a whole. Thanks to them, it is industry standard and careers are based on it. So the allegation here is that tone comes from the top. Fauci is one of those leaders who really believes in animal experimentation as essential. Let's go ahead and throw this New York Post report up on the screen that shows bipartisan. Oh, I can see that photo there for those who are watching. Of the beagles, beagles with their heads right. in the cages. Terrible. Um, bipartisan legislators demanding answers. There's also some movement in terms of um, a bipartisan bill to try to eliminate funding for these types of experiments. Activists have used uh, some on the libertarian rights in particular, like Rand Paul is, is one of the people who's supporting these efforts, um, their aversion to sort of like wasteful government spending. They've used that to say basically like, you should get on board with getting rid of this because also, look, this isn't a topic that I know um, an extensive amount about, but from reading and preparation for the segment, science has moved a lot and that what we're able to do in order to, to test has developed greatly. Uh, with technology, with AI. And so the argument is that these experiments, if they were ever necessary, not clear that they are, are really not necessary anymore. And what's more, oftentimes, they don't actually even provide effective data about how various um, treatments or parasites or whatever is they're testing, how this would play out in human beings. That oftentimes there's a huge error rate. And so the dogs or whatever animal is being tortured and tested on, it doesn't even provide data that's really useful or relevant to human beings. So um, pretty horrific what's going on and that I think, you know, most people have no idea that we're funding this sort of stuff. No, I had no idea. Um, but, uh, first of all, I have the beagle, love beagles. And so that I did not know the beagles are actually the standard dog used in many in experimentation. experiments, which yeah. is disgusting to me for a variety of reasons. Um, and Leighton actually got a good response from the University of Georgia, which is one of the stories that they they talk about there. They're like, they call it like a dog model because the disease has no cure. Unfortunately, animals part of this trial must be euthanized. 
We do not take lightly the decision to use such animals in our research. But really what it is, and look, there has to be a balance, right, obviously in terms of experimentation and more, is that the way that the dogs and the animals themselves are even treated throughout the experiment, it's clearly incredibly cruel. Um, and, you know, like you said, debarking, cutting out their uh, cutting out their vocal cords, letting flies like eat them to death. That's not the same as, you know, testing out a vaccine or something. And even then, maybe we should all have a discussion. So I try to look at this in the same way that we did gain of function, which was, okay, gain of function, we all began to learn about it because of the lab leak. Now, here's the thing. Whether the lab leak's true or not, and we'll probably never know at this point, although I strongly suspect that it is true, you often say this. I think we have enough information we know. to yeah. say, uh, hey, if there's a 50-something percent chance, and I think it's more like 90, uh, that this caused a pandemic, maybe we tighten up all the restrictions around this thing. Maybe we don't do it at all. Maybe the public should have some sort of a say. And that's what I am heartened and hoping. Look, obviously, this is coming in a culture war story. People are like, oh, Fauci and puppies. And look, that's actually completely true. But really what it is is maybe we should have Congress who appropriates, and I did not know this, $40 billion a year on different medical experiments, set some standards as to what the U.S. government is going to fund, and if there is a culture from the top saying, no, 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 dog experiments are actually pretty crucial, last time I checked, these people are not gods. They do not create the rules on their own. It's our money, we're the public, we get to decide how and what and where things are gonna be done in our name. And I would just encourage you that if you're a dog person like me, um, now I have a cat, so I'm also a cat person, but a dual, <laughs> dual personality. But if you take a look at that photo and you tell me whether you're cool with that, and I'm gonna say no, I'm not. And I think it's important that we all see exactly what's going here. And this yeah. is a much deeper story about factory, if people oh, know exactly how those factory farms and all those things, uh, I've had on, uh, the misfortune of having to drive past a slaughterhouse in Amarillo, Texas. And I can tell you, like, you never want to hear or see any of that stuff in your lifetime. Yes. Yeah. Um, Glenn was on Rising, actually. That's right. Oh, wow. And yeah. um, talked about, uh, he's, he's, I looked at him on this issue because he's very passionate about it, right. very much more knowledge about it, and it's reported on, on factory farms and on animal experimentation, all of this stuff. And um, with regard to the ne necessity of ex animal experimentation, which is what the proponents argue. Like, look, yeah, it's awful. This is what the University of Georgia is saying. Of course it's awful. Of course we don't like doing it, but we're trying to save human lives. Right. And so there's a balance here that has to be struck. Glenn compared it to the argument that people make in favor of torture, which is you can come up with some sort of theoretical scenario, the you know ticking time bomb, that if you could torture this one person into telling you, you could stop it and you could save all these lives. And so people who are proponents of torture, they'll concoct these elaborate scenarios to make you feel like, okay, well, we, we have to sanction this because people's lives are at stake. When in reality, that scenario actually never plays out. And so Glenn made that comparison here of like, yeah, you can concoct, of course, scenarios where it's like, well, would you torture a puppy to cure everybody of cancer? Uh -huh. All right. And you'd say, well, I mean, it's horrible, but I guess if we're going to cure all these people, right. then I guess I'm going to have to justify it. But the, that's not actually in reality the landscape that we're facing, especially with technological advances where a lot of this experimentation can happen using technology where no animals have to be harmed at all. So... Even this idea that like, oh, there's there's a difficult balance here and sometimes we have to test on animals to save human lives, even that is somewhat questionable. Now, I feel like I can't do this segment without saying that, honestly, I feel like a gigantic hypocrite talking about this because the factory farm treatment is awful. Um, I'm not a vegan. I eat animals that come from those factory farms. And so I just want to put out there that like, this is a really difficult and challenging subject, and I am by no means like pure or being totally ideologically consistent here, if I'm being honest. Well, so am I. And look, this is the thing. It's not on you. And we did not design the meat supply chain, okay? Yeah. Like, it's on the public to make it so that there are certain standards that we can make it so that we can live, we can both all eat 
a healthy diet and also and have life-saving treatments have life -saving and cancer treatments cures and all those things. And also not have people tortured in our name. And this is where you see the intersection. I mean, in the factory farm industry, it's just all about profit, which is that you, you know, the, the animals themselves are just commodities. You can treat them horrible. And actually it's worse for the animal. It's worse for you too, in terms of what yeah. you're eating and the diet and all that. I would really encourage people to look into the actual stuff that those animals are eating and how it affects you, your hormone levels and more. I have personally made that choice. But once again, it should not be on me. It's, this is not something that where you should have to go through and make sure what you're putting in your body is not, you know, not even about ethics, but really about over your health and their health. They should make it so that it is more sound. So I would put it as a much more systemic problem. That's exactly how I see this one. And to me, it just highlights the fact that Fauci is a creature of the system. Gain of function was and is part of the scientific of system, which then possibly created this horrific pandemic. These, you know, beagle experiments, these animal experiments are being highlighted, you know, for a variety of reasons, but it's a creature of the system in which they see it as necessary and they wanna hide the truth, just like they do from gain of function from you. It's your money, and you get to decide how we actually want to do with it, regardless of what all the myths are. Yep. And I think that we should try at least our best in order to at least raise awareness and possibly have these lawmakers do something about it. Look at what a good friend Sagar is. He'll even justify my moral hypocrisy no, for me. Thank that. you, Well, Sager. I have to justify my own. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.